2012 is dead and this is the autopsy. My name is Devin Faraci and this is Badass Digest. I'm here at the Cine Family in Los Angeles, California, uh, with my good friends, uh, Jeremy Smith from Ain't It Cool News, and Amy Nicholson from Movie Line. Guys, thank Hello. you for coming back. You were my very first guests on this show. Uh, so I think it's kind of fitting that you come back and we talk about the year that, that, that just ended. 2012 was actually good. I mean, not only was it the year of Step Up For, this was also the year of, of, of the master. If we are not helping him, then it is we who have failed him. Perhaps he's past help. Or insane. I think that that will be a film that we're going to like a lot better in five years. What do you, what do you think about The Master? Are you, that, that, that was not on your list. Was it on your list of masterpieces? Um, it actually isn't even on my top ten list. It, it, it's right under it. It's because I still don't know how I feel about it. Right. Uh, and, and I'm, I'm kind of hesitant of hesitant with putting it on a list because, I, yeah, it's one of those films that I, I can recognize that there is greatness within it, but I do not, uh, I have zero emotional connection to that film. Uh, it, it leaves me so cold. Uh, colder than even like the coldest Kubrick film. I mean, Barry Lyndon is a warmer movie than The Master, I think. Uh, seriously, it, it, there is just something about that movie, and, and not everyone has that experience. It's a total, it's a personal call on my part, and it, I can recognize that it's it's a great film. Uh, Although the bonus is we did make moonshine for this episode, so we're gonna make you drink until you appreciate that film. Uh, okay, oh, well. <laughs> I think this is a really terrific year for, for, for genre film, for, mm -hmm. for, for B-films. One movie that didn't make my top ten, and I actually already regret it, uh, is Looper. It should have made your top ten. I know. You know what? Mine. It, yeah. it, it came real close. It's terrific. It's, it's so smart. Uh, there are people who are like trawling for plot holes in the movie and these are the worst <laughs> people alive. This is just like, these are people who probably need to just go close the door, yeah. lock it, <laughs> pull the shades, turn on the gas on the oven, open the oven door, say a prayer to Sylvia Plath, and move along. Because uh, to bother looking for flaws in a movie as good as this, maybe well, there are flaws, but Jesus, who it's cares? It's so petty. A film comes along that I think uh, is so pared down to its essence of what it wants to be. It's so bold. And what I love about the film is that Ryan Johnson just like plunges you into this world and doesn't make any apologies and you just catch up. It's why, you know, really Scott wished he could have done with Prometheus in its own way, you know, except his ambition got out of, out of control with it. Well, let's talk about really, really, really good movies. Um, my number two movie of the year is Django Unchained. When I hear the trumpet sound, What's your name? I'm on a rise right out of the ground. Django. Then you're exactly the one I'm looking for. First time I saw it, I was like, this is really good. I don't know how good it is. Second time I saw it, I was like, holy shit, this is really good. I mean, this is an all-timer, yeah. I, I suspect. I was really worried about how the material would be received and how it would be portrayed, and if he could pull it off, if he could maintain that uh, his sensibility and actually not turn off the audience with right. it. Uh, and, and he does it. And the fact that he threw slavery into it just... Uh, which is a, a topic that has just never been adequately handled no. uh, cinematically. This has always been a thing that Tarantino has sort of been interested in, the idea of mm -hmm. how do you survive in a society where you are the under, the, the, the mm -hmm. oppressed, you know, when do you give in, when do you fight back? It's, it's kind of fascinating. And I think this is why Tarantino is, to me, like our most important <clears throat> filmmaker working today, because he doesn't deal in the black and whites and like the heroes. And Literally the he does in this movie. Yeah. But he, well, okay, yes. <laughs> but he also literally deals in the grays, you know, in right. the gray areas. And I feel like that's the part that gets missed in films. Mm -hmm. But I just want to say, though, can we agree on one thing, which is that I think Django is going to be the film that we're going to most remember in 10 years, and it's not going to win it's Best Picture. It's an all-timer. Yeah, really it's an all-timer, all and I it's not it going to get recognized this year in awards no. at all. It'll get nominated. Uh, it'll get nominated. That'll be the, that'll be the win for yeah, it. Yeah, it's not going to win anything. If it doesn't, it's just it, that just verifies that it's a great film. My number one movie of the year, oh, no. I watched it again last night, no. is Zero Dark Thirty. You really believe this story? Osama Bin Laden? Yeah. What part convinced you? Her confidence. Zero Dark Thirty is not just a masterpiece, I believe. It is not just the most important movie of the year, a movie that I think contextualizes the last decade of our crazy lives, mm -hmm. but is a movie that is putting a subtlety of cinema into, into movie theaters that I think audiences maybe not be ready for. You hated it. As somebody who reads the newspaper, I got literally nothing out of it. I mean, even when it comes to like the big exciting moment at the end of Zero Dark Thirty, which is the raid on Osama Bin Laden's compound, I knew that a helicopter was gonna crash, I knew that he was gonna be the last person on the top floor, I knew some women were gonna be shot, I knew like every bit of it beat by beat, and I don't feel like there's a film there. I feel like it's just a really, really good 
History Channel reenactment. Well, different pieces. It's very important that I mean that women were very involved in and and and. Are in, you in playing key. to the women? Are you playing yes, to the? I, you're I'm, playing I'm the woman real, card. You're a real gender traitor. Yeah. Wow! Wow! Because what a gender traitor you are. I think Catherine Bigelow is a gender traitor. Because I don't think she were, cares oh. anything about women. She writes a character in this film who is not interesting at all. I oh think my she, God! I think they're not. I'm, I'm going to interrupt no, you for no, a second. No, 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 I, no, I hate this for a second because rewatching it again, especially, really brought this to mind. That what I love about Maya. Jessica Chastain's character in Zero Dark Thirty is that not only is she a woman, she's a woman woman. This isn't Sarah Connor, who's a dude with tits. This is a woman who behaves like a female. I love the scene where she is talking to her friend who is meeting the uh, mm -hmm. Taliban mole, and they're, they're texting back and forth. And mm -hmm. the way that it's a modern woman would text, BRB, LOL. This is human. That's so no, great. They're not, not, they're not forcing her into man me, pants. I love LOL that about the movie. Smiling faces. I feel like Catherine Bigelow is so interested in making women seem tough that she makes them boring. But I don't need to know where she came from. I need right. to know that she's good at her job and she's doing it well. Character, I love watching it. Is it is character defined by, by action, action which is the Walter Hill way of right. telling the story. Right. That is, I mean, it is. Like the driver, is, where there's nobody has any names absolutely. and doesn't it make a difference where they vintage. come from. They are, they are only, they are defined by what they do. Yes. And what she does is hang on. Oh, Bigelow is no really firing on every possible cylinder. Just because you're bringing in Walter Hill into this and the driver, which is a movie that I love, does not mean I'm gonna agree with you because <laughs> I dare you to tell me more personality characteristics that Maya has besides dogged. I literally don't care. Then she's not a well-rounded character. Because she's not, not a well-rounded character she, no, by she's, any she's means. She's an obsessive. That's what an obsessive mm -hmm. is. They're dogged. That's she's, what she has. They sit down. They had that scene where she's talking to Jeff Neely, and she says, "Do you have any friends?" Oh, and that she is goes, the biggest cop out. She has no friends. She's got nothing. Well, of course this is she all has no she friends. Is. She's stuck she's in a foreign this. country away from all of her friends. But even, but that even doesn't with, even mean with she doesn't have the, even likes, with the posting, she has dislikes, no friends. food preferences. She likes I don't know toast. About I've this seen woman. the movie twice. She eats <laughs> toast twice. She does. She like loves toast. toast. She's so boring. You. She loves toast. <laughs> oh, you win. She likes toast. When she wins her Oscar, what'll be like? To a woman who loves toast, thank you for a well-rounded look at what a woman is. Okay, so what? Let's let's do a different question. What is not the best film? What's your favorite movie of 2012 that you think, when walking out of this year, you're probably going to end up watching the most? Honestly, I think it's going to be Pitch Perfect. What boring, estrogen-filled set have you prepared for us? Hey, Amy! I just ain't shot! I don't think it's the best one of the year, but I think it's just like it's the your most... your favorite. It's the one that really mm -hmm. works for you. That's yeah, what, that, that's what I, I feel like that yeah. should be the measure of a good film, is do you still want to watch it in five years? Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. What's your favorite movie there? A more. Really? <laughs> wow. the, the Michael Haneke slow death of 80 year olds movie. Oh, oh that's, that's a pick me up. It's exquisite. <laughs> watching French couples slowly die I in their like, apartment. I like watching old people die. I like watching French people die. You like watching young people like, die. You're <laughs> such a sadist. It was really it was right in the sweet spot. Really oh, perfect. man. Oh, it's so good. It's so <laughs> good. This was full when we began. This was, a, this was a full bottle. This is a brand new purchased. Full bottle of booze. Um, My favorite movie of the year is uh, The Avengers. You're, you're uh, lying. Which I have now watched at least eight times. You're time. actually lying. I think you're yeah, but really starting, just saying like, that. Starting a half hour in. No, right? I watched the whole no. thing, and then like, for the first half hour, I like I'm on Twitter, or I'm like cleaning Clean, up, yeah. and then I don't like I, you. no, you know, here's the thing. So like, yeah, I agree. The first half hour is a disaster. It's a mess. But once it gets past that, man, as a it's, it's the 14 year old boy who walked up to Queens Boulevard to buy comic books at the Tama. This is what he always wanted to see in a movie. He never thought he'd see it, and he saw it this year. There's a comfort to it. It's the same way that every now and again, I'll eat McDonald's, I'm loving it. Uh, because there's a comfort aspect to the larger issue of like chowing down at a quarter pounder. You know what I mean? Like this is that's so, the worst offense I've I ever know. heard. I know. I know. I'm surprised. I'm surprised it's not Les Miserables. You know what? I have not been able to see all of Rob because there was a fire alarm in my screening. I wish there had been a fire alarm at Universal when they were deciding to green light that movie. Like, it just, it's, a, it's a mess. It is, it's it's That's so it is a terrible. It is a terrible film, and it it's I, not terrible. It's, it is it is objectively bad. Like, it's, and I it's, hate, I it's hate hard, saying stuff it's like that. It's hard to watch, but it is it is so poorly directed. Yeah, even the great moment, the moment everyone loves. Uh, you know, I dreamed of Green. Anne Hathaway, Anne Hathaway. Right, right. She, we, we, she's going she to win the Oscar for yes, that. Guaranteed. But she but deserves it. She's but not, that she's bastard's not. called. She should, but she, she will. Won't. Who's Tom Hoop? I don't know. It's not going to be here. I oh, she 100% wants. She but, wins. Yeah. Uh, All right. Five bucks. Five bucks. 
Go on. I'll go 20. All right, okay. 20. Holy shit. Twenty that. bucks, That's twenty. A pizza Big and spender a beer. over there. Right. Yeah, no. Tom Hooper is just you know he he doesn't know how to direct a musical. Has no idea. And you know musicals you know going close up. Jeremy, you're and wrong. the fact what he doesn't know how to direct a movie. Well, I think that you're being too kind <laughs> because I think King's Speech proves he didn't know how to direct a movie. But yeah, the film is just a botch. It's just a, it's just a bad movie. I mean, that's what no, it's a bad, that's it's what a, drives a me movie. nuts is that it's getting all this acclaim, and I'm like, are you people watching this movie? Will it's, it win the it's Oscars? It's poorly made. I think it will. But um, actually, now I'm starting to think Lincoln will. Oh my god, I can't even believe we know about Lincoln because I love Lincoln. I can like, I totally love it like to it pieces. Actually, yeah. Like I love it. Like. I've seen it twice in theaters. I love, I, I love Lincoln. We are stepped out upon the world stage now with the fate of human dignity in our hands. Blood's been spilled to afford us this moment now, now, now. Here's a movie where uh, a playwright, uh, Tony Kushner, mm -hmm. gets uh, kind of center stage on it. I mean, right. it, it's the first Spielberg movie that I can think of where a writer's voice is as important as his. Well, it's words it are, more, are as important as pictures in, he in Lincoln for the first time ever. Yeah, I agree. Right. He is truly serving the writer. I think he did to a degree with uh, Empire of the Sun and Tom Stoppard, but it's really Kushner. Right. It's as much Kushner's movie as it is Spielberg's. Right, I agree. And it's, and it's very thoughtful. It's and, so and thrilling to hear these guys talk. It's And it, what's funny is that, Net, is that West Wing is on Netflix now, mm -hmm. on Netflix Instant, and it really is it's West Wing 1865, mm -hmm. where it's like really smart talking about issues. Yeah, I think that, I mean, yeah, as long as, I mean, I'm happy with Lincoln Wayne Best Picture just as long as, yeah, Les Mis or Silver Linings Playbook doesn't. Holy sh I hate so much. <laughs> I feel really bad, right? Because like, I love David O. Russell, and I really do. Like, and David O. Russell, I think, is kind of brilliant. I think he's like kind of like dark and interesting, and like says smart things. I think I Heart Huckabees was really underrated. That was like ten years ago. Silver Linings Playbook is David O. Russell saying, "I Heart Huckabees failed. How can I make it the same movie for dummies?" It seems like it's going to be a pretty. Like, you know, like a, a pretty typical David O. Russell movie, and it has some really nice character flourishes. Well, and he's got, and he has a good hand on quirk, like where he can right. do quirk and not make it like unbearable. Yeah, but then it, then it just. Literally, the movie is like, hey, Robert De Niro, you gamble too much? That's okay. Bradley Cooper, you're a violent, manic, depressive lunatic? <laughs> that's okay. That's the, whole, that's the whole movie. I hate. And I, I, you know, when I reviewed it, I was like, eh, this is all right. This is, you know, entertaining fluff. Mm -hmm. I said it was fluff. It's, it's, it's flom. But now I hate it. I, I now hate it as it moves forward in the Oscar thing. It, it's like what happened to the artist last year. <clears throat> but I think... Right, which yeah. is the artist as a movie on its own. It's like, eh, yeah. that's all right. Yeah. But as it becomes the best picture, like, go f*** yourself. This is a business. Yeah. And I, I become militant and I hate it. Yes. I love Jennifer Lawrence. I will marry Jennifer Lawrence to prove that I love her that much. That is the most noble sacrifice I've is ever heard. Most, I will marry Jennifer Lawrence. I really hope that Bradley Cooper gets the best actor nomination. I hope he dies. I hope he gets the best one because I really want the Hangover 3 ad commercials to be like, and the Oscar-nominated actor, Bradley Cooper, in The Hangover Part 3. I think Bradley Cooper is the Antichrist. Just, You're so whoa, jealous of Blonde. Whoa. Do you not, you not no, agree with that? I don't feel that way at He all. is that everything is that's wrong with society. I like, can't, I can't up. hate that a guy who so one mean. of his career highlights is Wet Hot American bummed, Summer. I know, I know. Michael Liam Black in, uh, in, in Wet Hot American Summer. I mean, that's... But that's that's it. Everything else, he is the face of the devil. I hate a movie where the guy is like, Did you just fart? No. <laughs> no, I don't even smell anything. You got cut off. I heard a squeak. I heard a squeak. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're my you you you're my go-to guest. You're my number one. No, you're my no, it's, it's you're 100. <laughs> I'm sorry. I love you, Jeremy, so much. You're my best man at my wedding. When I marry Jennifer Lawrence, you're my best man at my wedding. <laughs> but my date's gonna be Bradley Cooper. So. Oh. <laughs> So these were our favorite movies of 2012. These are the movies we hated. I'm drunk. How are you doing right now? Let us know in the comments right now. What was your favorite film of 2012? Did you love The Avengers as much as I did? Zero Dark Thirty, are you believer, a believer in torture? <laughs> <laughs> Can you guys stop me up? <laughs> so 2000... <laughs> to 2012.
What did you guys think? <laughs> Come on! <laughs> Jack and Uncle Al discuss their favorite holiday movies and how the ultimate Christmas story is about a bisexual, crack-addicted cop. As awards season approaches, Gray Drake lists the 10 movies that won't be on anyone's shortlist. Ben Lyons gives you his best and worst movies of 2012 and reviews Django Unchained, Zero Dark Thirty, and This Is 40. Devin Faraci goes off the nerd deep end in an illuminating exploration of his favorite film, Planet of the Apes. Get your film fix. Subscribe to Cinefix.